Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, the first Torrance school of the 21st century has its grand opening. We'll take you to the new Hall Middle School. And electric vehicles may be considered the cars of the 21st century. We'll show you how the city is helping EV drivers stay on the road. Then it's considered a delicacy by some, but it may soon be off the menu. We'll tell you why a particular soup is so controversial. Plus, after an emotional visit, the city says sayonara to the Kashua student delegation. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McKay. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. When bond measures Y and Z were passed in November 2008, the work of creating a school for the 21st century was just beginning. And now, after years in the making, the new Hall Middle School is finally open. Reporter Hiba Samud takes us to their ribbon-cutting ceremony. The school once jokingly called Duct Tape Hall is no more, as the community gathered for Hall Middle School's reopening. The phoenix was the bird that rose from the ashes, and this is a school that has certainly risen from the ashes of a whole lot of different things. So this community should be thanked a lot. The grand reopening marks the first brand new school built in the TUSD in more than 40 years. But this school is more than just a freshly painted building with new tiles. It's also considered a school for the 21st century. It, it is huge not only to be back, that's number one, but to have a facility like this, which is state of the art and we're uh, technic technologically uh, advanced uh, than any other uh, site. Hull has the first ever gymnasium for a middle school in Torrance, and this campus was designed to be green with solar chimneys, motion lights, and cool roofs. Even with this sparkling new campus, many local residents can't forget how far they've come. This brick symbolizes the last remnants of what this campus once was. Out with the old and in with the new, Olivia, an incoming 8th grader, was in awe of the campus and thinks it will help motivate students. It makes a difference. I think it definitely makes a difference. It makes the students more interested in what they're doing. And um, yeah, there's, there, there's probably going to be like more spirit in the school. And spirit was just what everyone had at the ceremony. Parents who once attended Hall and incoming students toured the new facilities and saw what the community can now call their own. And the new hall will offer new opportunities for their students, like after-school activities and new sports teams. For City Cable, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hiba. Other bond-funded projects are underway in the Torrance Unified School District, including Walterior and Magruder Middle Schools and South High School. Torrance's business landscape will soon change. 45 years of aluminum can manufacturing in Torrance is coming to a close. Ball Corporation, whose plant on Crenshaw Boulevard employed 120 people, will no longer produce and label cans for brands like Coca-Cola and Miller Beer. The Torrance facility, previously owned by Reynolds Metals, churned out cans on three production lines, two that produced 12-ounce cans and one that made 16-ounce cans. Ball Corporation says they are closing their doors here because of the cost of doing business in California. As the largest manufacturer, manufacturer of specialty beverage cans in North America, Ball will move part of their operation to Canada. A dozen employees at the Torrance plant will continue working there until the November closure. But don't expect the 250,000 square foot plant to remain empty for long. City officials say the property will be used as an industrial site and some believe the property may already be in escrow. Whether or not we're safer at LAX is an open question. But there's no doubt about it, in the last decade, more than $500 million has been spent on beefing up security at county airports. The number of law enforcement officers at LAX increased from 517 to 811. Major improvements also include fencing around the airport's perimeter, an automated baggage screening system, security cameras, barriers, an emergency response center, and a new fire station. The airport also has the largest team of bomb-sniffing dogs of any airport in the U.S. Today, LAX spends about $127 million a year on safety and security. That's compared to the $48 million spent in 2001. 
Governor Jerry Brown recently vetoed two controversial bills. His rejection of Bill SB 28 means drivers using handheld cell phones will get a cheaper ride. If the bill had passed, the first offense would have increased from $20 to $50. And for repeat offenders, the cost would have been more than $500. Brown felt raising fines is unfair to violators of ordinary means. Supporters of the bill said the increase was a necessary deterrent. And earlier in the year, state senator and former Torrance City Council member Ted Lieu drafted legislation that would ban protesters from picketing at military funerals. But while he finds those protests offensive, Brown vetoed Bill SB 888, saying the protests amount to free speech and are protected by the First Amendment. And could it be Batman? Academy Award-winning actor Morgan Freeman was spotted filming the new Batman movie here in Torrance. According to a source, Freeman was on the set of Batman 3, The Dark Knight Rises, in Alondra Park. Most of the filming was hidden from public view, but some spectators claim they also saw star Christian Bale, and yes, he was in the bat suit. Up next on This Week in Torrance, if you own an electric car, we'll tell you how charging it may soon be easier. And an art exhibit makes an unexpected stop here in Torrance. Those details are coming up after the break. When a village in India needs drinking water, whose hands are bringing it to them? 3.3... When a classroom in Nicaragua needs lights to facilitate education, whose tools make it work? When a village in Kenya needs food, whose efforts bring it to the people? <laughs> Engineers Without Borders USA answers the call with more than 225 university and professional chapters from a wide spectrum of disciplines. EWB USA reaches out to partner with developing communities throughout the world to solve many challenges that they face. With more than 400 sustainable engineering projects in more than 45 countries, our organization is changing the world. If you would like to find out more about how you, too, can change the world, visit www.ewb-usa.org and click Get Involved. Engineers Without Borders USA. Building a better world, one community at a time. 80. 30. 50. Every mile brings us closer. 64. Every mile in a city near you. 75. Help us stop diabetes. 100. Join the Tour de Cure. 60. Register to ride. 36. Or sponsor a rider. 50. Call 1-888-DIABETES or visit us online at diabetes.org forward slash tour. How many miles will you ride? 25. A few weeks ago, City Council discussed how Torrance would build an electric car infrastructure. Reporter Jacqueline Quinn gives us the details on some of their ideas. Currently, there are only a handful of charging stations open to owners of electric vehicles in the city. Some no longer even work, but city officials are planning to ensure there be enough in the future. The current goal is to have at least one mile uh, within one mile, there would be at least one charging station within Torrance. As for cost, state funds will help replace outdated stations. The city is working on finding other ways to fund new stations installed in Torrance. Staff is actively pursuing grants that would allow us to facilitate that. And besides those costs, Alex Krinos thinks charging station technology offers more convenience. Hey, where's the next place we want to put charging? You want to work with employers, major employers and folks to be able to take advantage of workplace charging. While the savings are not yet clear, electric cars do help to reduce carbon emissions, which is a key for a city like Torrance. Torrance has been pushing this, uh, companies and accommodating those companies that are choosing to be on the forefront of this next wave of automobile technology. To better understand electric vehicle usage and technology, the city is slated to begin a plug-in hybrid test program in 2012. Honda will be providing an EV fit for employees to drive. Torrance officials are still looking for more feedback on where to place these new charging stations. And you can leave your feedback online, but you only have until November 30th. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. Marriott Hotels is the latest company to offer electric vehicle charging stations for its customers. The Torrance Marriott has two Level 2 charging stations available. Level 2 stations provide 240 volts of electric current for faster vehicle charging than a standard wall plug. Now, if you'd like to give the city feedback on building the electric car charging infrastructure in Torrance, visit the city's website to learn how. If you're looking for a luxury car, South Bay Lexus is a good place to go. But what if you're looking for art? Reporter Hiba Samad explains. 
when trains make an unexpected stop, it's called a flag stop. And South Bay Lexus was clearly not the usual stop for art lovers, but stop they did for this memorable event. Not only was the location out of the ordinary, so were the pods. Once storage spaces, these large containers became unique galleries. Flagstop allowed well-known curators and artists to bring new ideas to the table and share space with unrecognized artists. As I walked through the pods, there were no definitions for what art is or should be. 3D displays, music, and political statements were just some of the types of arts I discovered. So this is a piece, and it's called Lair, and it's uh, maple, uh, gold over aluminum, and it has the Iraqi flag. Um, and it just sort of summarizes how I feel about uh, going in to another and inv invading a sovereign country. The Flagstop team also paired with the Schweitzer Learning Center, gave students an opportunity to display their pieces and encourage art education. While many artists out here representing their own art, I'm here at the Schweitzer Learning Pod where students with specific learning disabilities have their art displayed. This art is one example of the many displays that are here. It's an oil canvas self-portrait of one of the students at the center. This gives them an opportunity to show something that they're good at. So it's a real self-esteem builder. At this first Fox Stop event, artists and curators bring art out of galleries into an unusual environment. And these artists have a lot in common with the Schweitzer Center. I think because artists are always doing that and these students are also struggling looking for their own voice, we kind of uh, assimilated uh, quite elegantly with Schweitzer and their mission and their students. With art everywhere, the Flagstop team hopes to connect with other communities like Torrance to bring art to unexpected stops. For City Cable 3, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hiba. For more information, go to flagstopart.com. Banning smoking in public places is something most people can agree on, but when it comes to a ban on something with specific cultural significance, lawmakers often tread some murky waters. Reporter Jacqueline Quinn tells us more. State legislators are preparing to send a bill to Governor Jerry Brown to ban the sale of shark fins. Critics say the killing of sharks just for their fins is cruel. The manager of a local Chinese restaurant that offers the item isn't disappointed. We are not they sell it that much and for personal, I would suggest Queen not selling the soft And Liu isn't alone. This customer also supports the ban. I think it's a good idea. It's, it's like cutting off an elephant's uh, tusk to, you know, for the ivory and then the elephant dies. And there's no reason for a shark to die just so we can have soup. The bill was initially proposed to protect endangered sharks, but has sparked a debate about racism since shark fin is mostly popular in Asian cuisine. For now, the future of shark fins lies in Governor Brown's hands. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jacqueline Quinn. Thanks, Jacqueline. Estimates show that fishermen kill 73 million sharks every year, and wounded sharks are often returned to the ocean to die after fins are removed. But despite what some consider an immoral practice, selling shark fin is a lucrative business. It costs $600 for just one pound of the meat, and shark fin soup can cost upwards of $80 per order. Coming up, we'll tell you how the city said farewell to the Kashua Exchange student delegation. I felt like I was having a Charlie horse, but this was different. It, it burned and the pain went from one leg to the other and I could not move. I literally sat up in bed and said, dear God, please don't let me die here. Um. Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Carmona, former United States Surgeon General, here with a serious message about a hidden killer. Did you know more than 100,000 Americans die from deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism every year. Do yourself a favor. Find out if you're at risk for DVT and what you can do right now to save your life. Had I not survived, I, I would miss my daughter's wedding, the activities with our family, all these things. I could have missed them and I'm really thankful that I didn't. It is time for caring people everywhere to treat animals as more 
than mere property. To be bred, bought, and sold at an owner's whim. I urge you to adopt your next dog or cat at a local shelter or humane society. Please be a guardian, not an owner. Whirly Girls International is a non-profit educational and charitable organization dedicated to advancing women in helicopter aviation. And every year they provide scholarships to their members. Now this year, Robinson Helicopter is sponsoring a scholarship that gives one member the opportunity to attend a safety course and build R-44 flight time. The three and a half day course at Torrance Airport is perfect for members currently flying Robinson Helicopters. Go to whirlygirls.org for details. The application deadline is October 1st. And finally, this has been a difficult year for the country of Japan, but as they continue to do the hard work of rebuilding, student ambassadors from Kashiwa visited Torrance to continue the tradition. Reporter Hiba Samad brings us to their farewell banquet. You got a friend in me. It was a bittersweet moment for families here in Torrance as sister city members said goodbye to their new friends. And sitting around the dinner table that night, that's when I realized Mina had really become part of our family, and she always will be. For 37 years, Kashiwa and Torrance have shared their cultural exchange. But after the March earthquake and tsunami shook Japan, Torrance delegates decided to stay home. Students from Japan still came to Torrance as a way to move forward. I talked with my host family about the earthquake and I, I was very afraid. While the earthquake affected the Japanese delegation, Torrance delegates helped give them hope. Visits to Disneyland, trips to universities and just hanging at the beach allowed them to dream coming back to America one day. In my future, I want to walk uh, in the U.S. The Torrance Sister Association expects to send the Torrance students to Japan soon. But I can let go because I know it isn't sayonara, just jiao matane. So until next time, thank you. For City Cable 3, I'm Hiba Samad. Thanks, Hiba. The 2011 Torrance Student Ambassadors will have the option to visit Kashiwa next year. For more information, go to TorranceSisterCity.org. And that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McKay. And I'm Jin Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>